What's shaking, Navigation Nation? Welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday 11th, September 11th. We're going to go through the all the positions, the trade alerts, and uh, let's talk about the day trading stuff. Before we jump into that, let's just look at the markets overall. This is the S&P 500, obviously a big, big flush down, had a little bit of a bounce on Wednesday, and then a big down day on Thursday again. And then today, just kind of a choppy, smaller range. So I still think, uh, you know, I talked about this, I've talked about this in the day trading live stream room, which by the way, if you haven't been in there yet, get in there. It's good stuff. You're going to love it. Um, but anyway, we've, we had this big flush down. Now we're just kind of a little bit of a consolidation. And I still think we're going to just roll over and keep going down. So one thing we did do, and I'll talk about this during the alerts, but, you know, at the top here of this uh, little bottom section, we added a uh, put in XLK, which we don't, we don't buy a lot of just straight out puts for this type of uh, situation just because of the theta decay component. But uh, you know, I'm looking for a pretty fairly quick move lower and we got that initially and I still think we got more room to the downside. So got some ample short delta positions. We've got some short call verticals, some long put verticals. We got some bunkers and now we got a, a long put. And so I really like how our portfolio is shaping up. We've got positions in the S&P and gold and nat gas and bonds and some individual stocks and indices and different strategies, iron ducks and weekly double calendars. And that's what it's all about is building a portfolio that can uh, withstand most any type of situation. Obviously, the type of market that is the most difficult for the methodology and the way that we manage our portfolio is a situation like this, where you just get this slow grind higher with very little two-sided action. Uh, but even, even situations like this, I mean, this is great for our type of trading. And of course, when we have short delta like we do, this was great as well. So uh, really look forward to, love this high volatility market, especially uh, when it comes to the day trading. In fact, let's, let's just jump in there and talk about what we've got going on in the day trading. So first off, if, uh, if you're not in our day trading Facebook group, make sure you go there. That's where I've been posting our daily recaps. And so give you a little bit of insight of, of exactly what we're doing in there. Uh, just go to facebook.com, search for day trading options for income, and you can join that, that uh, Facebook group. But let's start with the Mighty 90 for the week. So actually a little bit negative on the week for Mighty 90s. And the thing that, the thing that we saw this week is, you know, we've got these big ranges, but a lot of that happened overnight, and then in the morning, when we're when we're typically getting some good two-sided action for these mighty ninety trades, the market just kind of stayed a little bit steady without without the big swings that we that we like to see. And so, our mighty ninety opportunities were a little bit muted this week. Of course, Monday was closed for Labor Day, but Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. There's the closing bell. Uh, each day, we only took two trades. Uh, we we had two winners on Tuesday. Uh, the big the big one that put us in the hole was this Zoom one, um, which we lost twelve hundred bucks on, and and that's the one that we ended up. Of course, uh, Murphy's Law would have it. We went in with full position size, where some of these others were were smaller. But uh, so took that loss, and that's what that's what really put us in the in the hole for the week. But uh, still seventy five percent winning percentage. Just that losing day had two losers on Wednesday, and all the rest were winners. But just a little bit smaller because we were, we were keeping our position size small because the opportunities just it's frankly weren't there. And so you've got to adjust. You've got to be aware that you cannot force things. And so uh, slightly negative on the mighty 90s. Pairs trades were pretty muted as well. In fact, the only one that we did was I took an I took one early this afternoon on Friday between the NASDAQ and the Dow because I saw uh, what I thought was an opportunity and just had it on for really 30 minutes or less and booked just a little profit of 115.50. So that's all we did in the pairs trades. But the big story is the runners. We have been, if you've been part of the live stream, you know that we're we're really trying to hone this strategy. And the last missing piece that we just couldn't quite get until I think, you know, I mean, really this week is when this week and last week, we've been really honing in on, on really cutting our losses pretty quickly and trying to let those runners, hence the name, let those runners run. And, and we've been doing a really good job of it. This week booked over $5,300 
in profits on our runner strategy. 43 trades, 62.8% winning percentage. Tuesday booked 192. Wednesday with that big range, those are, I mean, obviously for runners, the longer, the bigger the range and the longer you can let them run, uh, the bigger potential. So booked over $2,000 that day. Thursday, 975. But the big thing is, and this is, this is key, today booked over 2100 bucks in the in the runner strategy and remember going back to what the SP did I mean this was a pretty choppy not that big of a range especially not as big as the last week has been so this little kind of choppy day we were still able to produce over $2100 in profits on that runner strategy so in summary for the week uh like I said mighty 90 129 pairs trade 115 and then runners 5300 for the last two weeks so since i started tracking it on this sheet uh what we've done here is total of mighty 90 profits a little over 1400 pairs trades minus 152 and runners uh whopping 6500 dollars so uh good stuff we're, we're again we're just kind of honing this criteria on our exit for runners and then we're going to roll it out as a as a specific strategy to become part of the day trading master class uh, so we'll be doing that fairly soon we also have the pairs trade um, uh, stuff coming out as well so just kind of working on both of those at the same time and and trying to push to get those out we're also working on the new platform trying to get that out to you all so a lot of cool stuff coming uh, but uh uh, oh, I'm sorry. That was the runner. So total trade summary for the last two weeks, uh, $7,800, um, winning percentage of 61. This is with all trades. So this is exactly 100 trades in total, and that includes all three strategies. So that's where we're at on the day trading stuff. Let's. Uh, oh, the other thing I've I've been talking about in the live stream room, and I want to make sure that that uh, everyone kind of th starts to think this way, and we're really focusing on helping our members build and create a six-figure trading business. And that doesn't mean you have to have a six-figure account. In fact, today, um, you know, I took a I took a couple trades on Amazon with just one contract. And so, you know, one contract in Amazon was about $4,700, $4,800. And so those are big, but that's the most capital I used on any trade. In fact, most of those was, was less than half that. I mean, we're talking about a couple thousand dollars per trade, and we were able to book... Uh, you know, twenty one hundred dollars on on these on the runner strategy using very very small capital. So this can be done with a small account. You don't have to have a massive account to do this. And what we've been talking about as far as building to build a six figure business trading, uh, specifically day trading, you have to you need to be able able to get to a point where you're averaging four hundred dollars a day. So four hundred times there's about two hundred fifty two. But let's say two hundred fifty trading days in a year. That's that's a hundred thousand. That's six figures. So you know that's something you want to be thinking about. Of you know, kind of either as a daily goal or a daily average. Obviously, you're never going to get that consistent where you're just 400, 400, 400 every day. But uh, I mean, look at look at what we've done on a daily basis just this week. Of course, the volatility's been up, and that's going to change. But um, but it's very very doable, and it's very doable using a smaller account as well. So. Uh, if, again, if you're not in the day trading room, make sure you get in there. It's good stuff. Uh, we're, we're, we're creating something really special here. So look forward to having you in there. All right, let's go to the alerts for the core portfolio, starting with um, uh, Tuesday. Our first trade, we did a closing trade in Tesla. This was an iron duck. Uh, unfortunately, with the down slide in Tesla, uh, we had to kind of flush this out of this one. Now, price did bounce not too long after we got out, but and I know I know some of our members mentioned that they they kind of held on and they were able to end up booking profits on that. So so nice work there, but we're not going to do that. We're not because here's the thing: if it flushes through our break even, through our predetermined exit point, uh, you know there are going to be times where it's going to keep going, and we do not want to take max loss. That completely kills the uh, the profit factor over time. And we're all about probabilities. We're all about occurrences over time and maximizing our profits over time. So we went ahead and took a loss on that one, uh, even though it did bounce afterwards. And I know some of you all booked profits. So nice job on that. Uh, next trade, rolling adjusting trade in Natty Gas. So we've had this short strangle in Nat Gas that we've been managing. 
uh, getting some downside action this week, which is helpful for our position. Uh, let me squeeze this in so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, so we're up about $727 since we did our last roll. If we continue to get a little bit more downside action, that's going to benefit our trade. We've got a decent amount of time left here. We're still only, you know, we're st we still have 46 days to expiration. So not looking to do anything in that one yet. Uh, let's see. Next alert was IWM. So rolling adjusting trade with this down movement in stocks that we're seeing a lot of our vertical spreads, short call verticals, long put verticals, we're rolling them down, adjusting the strikes down, we're, we're booking those credits uh, on the rolls, you know, when we get over 50% of max profit on the trade. And that's exactly what we did here in IWM. So uh, in this one, we went ahead and rolled out to, um, we were down to 10 days to expiration, rolled out to 45 days. So let's take a look at all of our positions in IWM. We've got a few different pieces here, including uh, bunkers and vertical. So let's start with the one that we rolled. This one here. Now, a couple of things I've, I've done this week that I don't normally do is I actually rolled out to the weeklies. So we're already in the October monthlies. It's so instead of just rolling the strikes closer and staying in the same cycle, uh, just to kind of diversify our time frames, I just went ahead and rolled out another week and then rolled those strikes down to accommodate. So uh, it just kind of spreads it out a little bit. It's easier to keep track of. Uh, you could certainly roll within the same cycle. We still have a good amount of time in that October cycle, but uh, just kind of spreading, spreading the love a little bit. So that's the one we just rolled. Here's the other one we have in the October monthlies, up about 156 since we did that roll. So looking for some more downside action there. And then we've got a couple bunkers, one of which is uh, this one here in November. Now we're gonna we're probably gonna take this off next week. We're getting a lot of kind of sag in that PL. Of course, if we get a little quick pop lower, uh, hopefully we can we might be able to book a little bit of profits. Uh, but most likely we'll we'll take this off near kind of break even. And then our other one that we have out in December is up a little bit. Uh, looking for some more downside action before we do anything there. So if we get a nice flush next week, we're going to be taking off some of these bunkers uh, and just kind of booking profits. And we may we may even be a little bit long if the market gets super oversold uh, or be a little bit closer to neutral. But I'm okay with that if we do get a good flush down and book some profits here. So that's IWM. SPY did a opening trade in SPY. We added an iron condor here. Uh, in the very next trade, we closed out the uh, the remaining call vertical side of our September iron condor. So we added one in October, closed out the remaining piece in September. So if we take a look at SPY, here is, oh, that's our iron duck. Let's go with our iron condor first. So you can see we're pretty centered. We've booked, or not booked, we are up over 150 bucks since we put that on earlier this week. And then while we're here, I'll show you our iron duck that we have. And this one is in the duck head. We've got until next, well, until the 17th is the expiration date. So obviously if it flushes down, then uh, we're going to end up taking a loss and getting out. But that's also why we keep the short delta. So you've you know, I think a lot of people, especially newer traders, they look at each trade on a trade by trade basis. And if you have a loser, it's, you know, it's, it's real frustrating, you know, Hey, this is such a high probability trade. How could I, how could I lose? Well, you can lose on high probability trades. You know, these are over 85%. We typically win over 90% of our iron ducks, but, uh, you know, if we do get a big flush down in the market, we may have to bail on this one. If it kind of stays steady, hopefully we can book a duck head. Uh, but it's important to keep that short delta for the protection on the downside uh, of, of, of these ducks as well. We got a big buffer to the downside when we put it on, but we've also had a big move lower in the market. So keep that in mind. And, and I, I want to put on some more next week. I've, I've actually just been holding off. I was looking at putting on one yesterday after that down move, but I thought, you know what, I, I think we're going to get a little bit more downside. We did get a little bit today. I was looking at putting on another one today, but I figured, you know, what, I'm just going to wait until next week. And regardless, if we go up or down next week on Monday, we will be adding some ducks. So look for that next week. Uh, there's the closing one. Uh, ES, rolling adjusting trade in ES. So we got a couple sets of long put verticals here. Roll this one from 37 days to 51 days to expiration. We are over 50% of max profit. So we went ahead and just book that, lock that in, and extended duration to keep that short delta on. And so if we take a look here, 
This is one of them. We've got, we're up about 100, 180 some dollars on that one, looking for a little bit more downside. And that's the one that's still back in September. So only seven days. So we will be rolling that next week. Uh, and then this one is the one that we just rolled from the alert. And uh, we're up about 345 cents, 300 and some dollars since we did that roll. So again, just holding those for that downside exposure. So here's the opening trade I mentioned in the beginning of the uh, update here in XLK where we just bought a long put. I was looking for, you know, bunkers can be great for more for that really extended down move, but I also wanted to get some more short term short delta on. And so we put on, we just bought a, a long put in XLK. The timing was fantastic, at least to this point. Uh, in fact, I was, I was streaming live in the day trading room and I, and I just kind of told everybody, hang on, I'm going to, I, I want to put this on because I've, I'm afraid the market is going to tank today. And sure enough, that's what it did. In fact, I put this on right here and then we got this big tank that day and then some more downside today. So this thing is up about 385 bucks since we put it on, but we're going to hold that, see if we can get some more downside into next week. I'd like to book 50 to 100 percent profit. So we paid 12.45 for this. So if we could book, you know, six, seven, eight, 1,200 bucks on this, if we get a quick move, uh, that's that's kind of the goal there. We've also got a long put vertical here in XLK that we've been holding for short delta. We're up about 290 bucks since we rolled that. If we get a little bit more downside, we will roll that and lock in that piece. And then we've also got a bunker here, which is up a couple hundred bucks or 150 bucks. Uh, so looking for some more downside on that one. RH. So we did a post earnings short put vertical. Uh, this was one that we actually were talking about in the live stream room, in the day trading room. And so it opened up, gapped up above the expected move, started to come down. So we got in, did see a little bit more downside today. Uh, if we look at where we're at here. Uh, price is just outside of our range, so looking for some upside action to get back into range next week. And these expire on the 19th, so we've got about a week week to go. Uh, so hopefully we can get some up movement in this one next week uh, and, uh, and book profits. That's the plan. SPX, weekly double calendar. So uh, we did this with seven days. And, and note, I put the AM options right here. So always make sure you read the comments uh, to determine because there's a couple different uh, seven day options or front week of seven back week 11 when we put these on. And so let's take a look at that to begin with. So just, so you know what I'm talking about. So now it's six days, but when we put it on, it was seven. So in, in the brokerage platforms, it shows AM. That just means the options expire in the morning, uh, the following day. Whereas this, these are normal PM options. So I had a question from one of our members um, about that. They, they entered with, uh, with this one being the front week and they couldn't figure out why their pricing was different on the spread. There's nothing wrong with doing that. I just like the pricing a little bit better when we put it on in this cycle. And so, uh, so that's why we did that. But make sure you're paying attention to that uh, on SPX and they don't, they, they only happen, you know, every, every month. So we've got one here, we've got one here, we've got one here. So it's not like it's every week by any means. Uh, it's just in those specific cycles. So we put on a, an SPX, uh, weekly double calendar. Now, before we jump into that and check that out, I want to talk about the VIX. I want to talk about volatility. First of all, look at the S and P is down five, uh, so not not too much. Uh, Dow's actually up, but the VIX is down eight and a half percent. And I'm talking about the VIX futures. Uh, if we look at the spot VIX, the spot VIX is down almost ten percent. Now, what's interesting about this uh, on the surface that you say, okay, yeah, volatility got crushed today, uh, but market was kind of steady, right? Well, the market wasn't really steady. The market was actually down a pretty decent amount at one point, and the VIX was still down. If you remember. Going back into the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about how the market was was continuing to climb, but yet volatility was continuing to climb. And then all of a sudden, now we're seeing downside in the market, but yet volatility is going down. And for this for this long a period of time, in the 20 years I've been trading, I've never seen this. Uh, it's just it is some goofy stuff going on with with volatility and the market movement. You know, obviously, typically, if the S and P 500 is going up, you're seeing volatility contract. Uh, 
If you're seeing the S&P 500 going down, you're seeing volatility expand. And we've been seeing the opposite of that. So it's just really, really weird stuff. So even though we have had some down movement since we put on our SPX weekly double calendar, we're still not up on the, we're still down a little bit on the trade because implied volatility has contracted. And more importantly, the difference between the front and back week uh, has has uh, has narrowed. So we've got 26 here, and we've got uh, 24 here. So that the difference between those two has has narrowed a little bit, and that's why that's what we're seeing here. So uh, things can change in a flash. So nothing nothing to be nothing to do about that. It's just an observation that. Uh, you know, because volatility is a big factor. Vega is a big, big factor when it comes to these weekly double calendars. And things are just acting a little goofy out there right now. So, um, so just be aware of that. Um, next in SPX, well, I'll go to the alerts and come back to it. Uh, Apple rolling adjusting trade. Well, no, actually I won't. <laughs> this is an alert from last week. So while we're on SPX, I'll just show you we've got a, an iron duck here as well. Uh, price is right here in the duck head. This one expires on the 24th. So we've got a few weeks here, uh, or excuse me, a couple weeks before uh, we do anything on this, but uh, that's where price is on that duck. Rolling adjusting trade in Apple. So can you believe it? Apple is actually going down. We've been holding this uh, short, short delta play in Apple. And it's not real fun when you're holding short delta and something is doing this on you. You know, you're taking that heat, uh, but, you know, obviously it's it's coming down pretty significantly now and with, a, with a lot of technology. We've been talking about for weeks, if this thing's really going to roll over, it's going to be led by tech, and that's exactly what's happening right now. Uh, you know, you see the S&P just down slightly, but the Nasdaq's down over a percent, and that's been the story here for the last week and a half or so. Uh, so Apple... We had this long put vertical, went ahead and rolled that out and kind of a similar situation. We just rolled it out a week. So we are in the we are in the October monthlies with 35 days and we just rolled that out to uh, to the ones with 42 days and adjusted our strikes down. Instead of rolling out to November with 70 days, I didn't want to go out that long. So we just used the weekly. Now, remember, the only time I'm going to use these weeklies for this is if it's a very, very liquid stock or ETF. And that's why I've done it in Apple. I did it in IWM. Uh, I think I did it in the Qs, which we'll get to. So it's got to be super liquid. Some of these weeklies are not very liquid. So just be aware of that if, you, if you're rolling to the weeklies. Mostly, most of the time we roll to the monthlies. But with the amount of time left, we just decided to roll to the weeklies to make that adjustment. And so with Apple, that the price is pretty close to where we rolled it. So we'll just hold that for hopefully some more downside exposure. Expiration trade in SPY. So we had an iron duck that we uh, price ran up. It was just is in the beak. And so we just went ahead and let that expire and booked the beak profit on that one. Uh, DIA, another rolling adjusting trade in DIA. And this one is a couple sets of short call verticals. So we rolled this from SEP uh, out to October. You can see we're up a little bit since that roll today. And then the other one we still have in September, which only has seven days to expiration. So we'll be rolling this one next week. But prices come all the way back into range. And if we get a, just a little bit of downside movement next week, that will bode well. So that's why I'm holding on to this one until next week. Next alert, rolling adjusting trade in QQQ. So a very similar situation. We've got some short call verticals in the Qs. Uh, this one we also rolled out to the weeklies. So you can see price is pretty close to where we rolled it this morning. And then we've got one in the October monthlies as well. Uh, we're up about 200 bucks since we rolled that one last. And then we've got a bunker. This one is in November, so we'll be looking at potentially taking this off next week as well. We're getting close to that 60 days to expiration, so we don't want to we don't we don't want to get caught in Death Valley down here. So we're going to go ahead and close that out, and we'll probably add it back in in December, uh, or add some more some type of short delta in there. And lastly, Ulta. Oh, Ulta, Ulta, Ulta. This was a little bit of a frustrating one. This was a post earning short put vertical. I had such high hopes for Ulta. It was, uh, so it came down, we, we got in right here, uh, right after earnings, after, after it came down significantly, we we're looking for kind of steady to higher prices. And, uh, and the market 
complete the 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 broad market completely flushed, but you can see Ulta barely went down. Went down a little bit this day, a little bit this day, and then even with the market going down, Ulta was going up, and you know that that just bode well for potentially you know being able to book profits here. We had a little bit of a downside, and then it popped up yesterday, and we should have gotten out here, but it was such a quick move. Didn't have a chance. I wasn't looking at it at the time that it got up to this level. I know a bunch of our members uh, went ahead and got out, booked close to 50% of max profit, and then this thing just fell apart with the rest of the market. So unfortunately, we had to bail today. Now, keep in mind, what happens a lot of times is, is you know the day that after earnings and it opens up above the expected move and you get in, a lot of times, I mean, the stock will just shoot up from there, right? Or sometimes it'll grind higher, or kind, of, you know, kind of stay steady, and that's what we're looking for. You'll also notice that sometimes price comes down to around the closing price of uh, where it where it closed before the earnings announcement, and and it'll bounce off that, and and that's what we're seeing here. So, uh, you know, I talked about this in the comments of the alert. There's, you know, I wouldn't have an issue with. Uh, holding on or rolling this or just closing it and opening up a new one and and looking for a bounce in the next week because I think that's probably going to happen. I mean, it, it bounced pretty hard. I mean, it, it took back half of its losses uh, of the day after it bounced off that level. So I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised at all if this thing rips higher and rallies. But we just we just got out, cut our losses. Uh, but I made sure and mentioned that in the alerts in case you wanted to uh, keep that dream alive and, and try to book profits in Ulta. All right, so that is, those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions. John Deere, look at this thing. I mean, I guess the tractor business is just still good, even with the market crashing. Um, but we've got a we've got a uh, short call vertical here. Price is just outside the range, but no no love on the downside from John Deere during this flush. I mentioned DIA, IWM, QQQ, RH, SMH. We've got a short strangle here that's been adjusted. Uh, price is hanging out right here. Not much P uh, P and L. Not much profit or loss yet uh, since we did this roll. Just waiting for some more time to pass. I mentioned SPX, SPY, XBI is our adjusted strangle. We've adjusted this into a straddle. We're up about $662 since we did our last roll there. We'll continue to let some theta decay here. We're in October, so we've still got 35 days to expiration there. So not looking to roll yet. And then lastly, XLK, which I already mentioned. So looking for some downside action in XLK. We got a vertical bunker and, and a long put. So those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. That's our day trading recap. If anybody has any questions, let us know. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll be in the live stream day trading room all week next week from 9 30, uh, excuse me, 8 30 a.m. to 10 a.m. Central. That's the first 90 minutes of the market. Uh, so if you can join us, we'd love to have you. We're having a good time in there. Everybody have a great weekend. Talk to you next week.